turn on to reading the world scriptures and the teachings of Sang Myung Moon. Yesterday we stopped at uh, page 494, Teachings of Our True Father, the Reverend Dr. Sang Myung Moon, on page 494, and uh, we can now start on page 495, and we continue to read the teachings of Our True Father. And uh, the subtopic is subtopic number four, preparation for Christ's advent and the responsibility of John the Baptist. And we continue to read. Jesus said, among those born of women, there has risen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet, he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is from Matthew 11:11. 11, 11. What did he mean by this? The mission of the prophets through the ages was mainly to testify to the Messiah. Prophets in the past testified from a distance of time. But John the Baptist was the prophet contemporary with the Messiah, the prophet who could bear witness in person to the living Christ. Therefore, he was the greatest among prophets. However, John failed to love and serve the Messiah, even the least of the prophets then living in the spirit world knew that Jesus was the son of God and served him that is why John who was given the greatest mission and failed became less than the least from his birth John should have lived and died in the service of Christ but instead he died over involvement in the trivial in a trivial matter the affair of Herodi Herodias was that the path God intended for John the Baptist Jesus said from the day from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven has advanced forcefully and forceful men lay hold of it Matthew 11:12 In other words Jesus said that during days of John the Baptist just prior to the appearance of Jesus 
there was the possibility that the kingdom of heaven could be taken and claimed by forceful men. If John the Baptist had believed in Jesus, he certainly would have become Jesus' chief disciple. Jesus, twelve disciples and seventy disciples would have been the leaders of John the Baptist's group as Jews of good reputation they would have won over the scribes and the priests to Jesus' side. One day, John's followers came to him and asked, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you bore witness, here he is baptizing and all are going to him. This is from John, the book of John 3 verses 26. They carried concern in their question. Look at all the people going to Jesus. What about you, John? Reply. He must increase and I must decrease. This is from the book of John 3, verses 30. Usually, this passage is interpreted as evidence that John's, of John's humility. But what it really means is that John and Jesus were not united in heart and action. If Jesus and John had united, their destiny would be to rise or fall together. Know then that the reason Jesus died on the cross was due to the failure of John the Baptist. This is a speech of October 23rd, 1973. And now we get to the subtopic number five, worldwide preparation for the Christ's advent. And we read, Now then Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is he who, was, who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Then Herod the king heard this. Sorry, I repeat that. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. They went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and, and mail. This is from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. And we read, The 
ancient children of the East were possessed of a wisdom which they inherited from Abraham who transmitted it to the sons of his concubines as it is written unto sons of the concubines that Abraham had Abraham gave gifts and sent them away eastwards into the country of the children of of the east this is from the book of Genesis chapter 25 verses 6 and in the course of time they followed the tr they followed the track of that wisdom into many directions this is from Zahor 1.100b and this is from Judaism and we read I tell you many will come from east and west and sit at the table with Abraham Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven this is from the book of Matthew chapter 8 verses 11 now we on this same subtopic the worldwide preparation of Christ the uh, Christ's advent we read the teachings of our true father the Reverend Dr. Sang Myung Moon Reverend Francis you'd like to read We're now on page 496, Teachings of Our Father, Reverend Samyang Moon, Buddhism in India, Confucianism in China, Zoroastrianism in Persia. Were religious religions with leading influence in the Orient Spiritualists of these religions could naturally recognize who Jesus was. And this was from the speech in February 10, 1992. In preparation for the first coming of Christ, God sent the prophet Malachi to chosen people 430 years beforehand to arouse in them a strong messianic expectations. At the same time, among the world's prophets or peoples, God founded religions suited to their regions and cultures by which they could make the necessary internal preparation to receive the Messiah. In India, God established Buddhism with Gautama Buddha, open parenthesis, 565 to 485 BC, close parenthesis, as a new development out of Hinduism. In Greece, God inspired Socrates, open parenthesis, 470 to 399 BC, close parenthesis, and open the brilliant age of classical Greek with Greek civilization. In the Far East, God raised up Confucius, open parenthesis, 552 to 479 BC, close parenthesis whose teachings of Confucianism establish the standard of human ethics. Jesus was to come upon this worldwide foundation of preparation, and through this, his teachings 
he was to bring together Judaism, Hellenism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. He was to unify all religions and civilization into one worldwide civilization founded upon the Christian gospel. And this is from the exposition of the divine principle, Parallels 6. Jesus was born of Asian blood, but since he lost his body in Asia, his legacy moved in the opposite direction to Western civilization centered on Rome. In a course of restoration through indemnity, originally, had Jesus not died on the cross, he would have led Israel to create a unified religious sphere with Buddhism in India and Confucianism in the Far East, centered on his teachings. The religious realm was to be unified first. The highest leaders in the religious sphere communicate with the spirit world and know the direction of heaven. For this reason, had Jesus won for Israel a degree of independence from Rome and unified the divided peoples or peoples in the lands of the Middle East, representing the twelve tribes of Israel, he would certainly have been able to embrace Asia. And this is from a speech in April 12, 19. 92. So uh, we have another subtopic, misunderstood by his family. Now it's already 5.33. I think we'll read that tomorrow. I will continue. He went away from there and came to his own country. His disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard were astonished saying where did this man get all this what is the wisdom given to him what mighty works are wrought by his hands is not this the carpenter's son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And this is from the book of Mark, chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning the boy, Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't know it, but supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances, and when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. And he said to them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's 
house and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them on the third and this was from the uh, book of Luke chapter 2 verses 41 to 51 and on the third day there was a marriage at Cana in Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there Jesus also was invited to the marriage with his disciples when the wine failed the mother of Jesus said to him they have no wine and Jesus said to her O woman what have you to do with me my hour has not yet come and this is from the book of John chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 then Jesus mother and brothers arrived standing outside they sent someone in to call him a crowd was sitting around him and they told him your mother and brothers are outside looking for you who are my mother and my brothers he asked then he looked at those seated in the circle around him and said here are my mother and my brothers whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother and this is from the book of Mark chapter 3 verses 31 to 35 and we have here the teachings of our father it's about yes Today, Christians easily believe that the Virgin Mary conceived a child by the Holy Spirit. But in those days, who believe it? Apparently an illegitimate child, Jesus, was the target of derision. His brothers cursed him, the villagers pointed fingers at him, and even children mocked him and harassed him. Jesus lived to be 33 years, yet he was not married. Why? Everyone gets married, but what family would willingly give their daughter to be the bride of such a paria? To face the miserable circumstances of life with him. And this is from a speech in January 17, 1993. Do you think that the people in the village did not suppose that Jesus was an illegitimate child? They did, and this caused great tension between Joseph and Mary. Joseph asked Mary many times, Who is the boy's father? Whenever he asked her, Mary could not answer when she told him that she conceived Jesus by the Holy Spirit, Joseph must have disbelieved her, saying, I am the one who saved your life. What kind of game are you trying to play with me? Thus, they would fight and quarrel all the time because of Joseph's suspicion. Their fighting must have continued even after Mary gave birth to other children. At the age of 12, Jesus had a chance to go to the temple in Jerusalem. His parents did not know that they had left him behind until three days into their journey home. When they returned and found him in the temple with the priests, Mary asked, Why are you here? Jesus replied, Where else would I be but my, in my father's house? He was complaining about his parents who had left him behind for three days, returning home without him. And this is from a speech in September 20, 1992. Even when Jesus was helping Joseph with his carpentry work, he did not lead a comfortable life. His life was full of hardships and his heart endured infinite sorrow and this is from a speech 
in October 18, 1959. Mary did not help Jesus with the wedding he desired. She even opposed it. Jesus works to Mary during the wedding at Cana. O woman, what have you to do with me? Reveal his reproachful heart toward his mother who helped in the weddings of others but neglected to help her own son receive a bride. Yet, for Jesus to marry was the most important requirement of the providence. With this perspective, we can understand why Jesus asked, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And this is from Matthew chapter 12, verse 48. And this is from a speech of our father, April 16, 1996. In those days, it was customary for males to marry at around 18 to 20 years of age. Why did Jesus not marry? Why was he still single even at the age of 33? In fact, when Jesus was 17 years old, he honestly told Mary the providential reason why he must marry. Adam fell around 16 to restore the human form he had to marry, and a certain procedure would be required. Three times he spoke of this to his mother at age 17, and then at age 27, and again at age 30. But his mother would not listen to him. And this is from a speech on December 25, 1994. The reason why Jesus had to go the way of the cross was only secondarily because the leaders of Israel betrayed him and the Jews went against him. The primary reason was that Jesus' family or Joseph's family could not prepare the day for Jesus to be blessed in a holy marriage. Had that one day came or come, yeah, Jesus would not have died on the cross. And this is from a speech on March 22, 1970. So now it's uh, 5.44 and that ends, I think, with our Hunduke on page 498. So we have read today a few pages from page 495, the teachings of our Father under the subtopic, Preparations for Christ's Advent and the Responsibility of John the Baptist. So we heard how John the Baptist was doubting in prison because he was not inspired. So if you are in prison, you, you should still be, you know, focused if you have a great responsibility. He was asking his disciples, maybe he should have told his disciples, please go with Jesus, mm -hmm. if he united with Jesus, mm -hmm. so that his disciples, which is maybe higher than uh, the fishermen, the prostitutes, they can unite and maybe they could have done something for Jesus and protect, protected Jesus, but it crumbled when he asked, are, are we looking for one? Yeah. Are you the one? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jesus cannot even answer him directly. The lame could walk, the blind can see. It's already a manifestation that he is the Messiah. So it is very sorrowful for Jesus that John, you know, as he is the one among born of women, there is no one uh, greater than John the Baptist. Yet if you go to the spirit world, yet he, he is in the list, of, in the kingdom of heaven, is greater than he. It's like, you know, when, G when everyone goes, who is the least, will be greater than John. So John will be in the, the lowest uh, in the kingdom of heaven. 
but at least it's heaven, but you know, he's still the least. And God already sent many things about his birth and Zechariah and even Elizabeth. They were inspired before when, the king, uh, when, when John the Baptist was born and he was struck dumb because he couldn't believe his wife can give birth and there's a mission to open the way like Elijah. It was even written that they know that he, he will be Elijah. So even Zechariah, he should have, you know, still pushed John that you are Elijah, you have to open the way of the Messiah. But there was a disconnect. They said, how could Jesus be the king, you know, the, the Messiah? They never supported even Jesus. Yeah. He should have brought Jesus to the temple, not stay with uh, Joseph as a carpenter and maybe even help him uh, have a marriage at 17, 20 or 27 and it would, could have protected Jesus. Yes. So, they should have been yeah. together. So they have... Joseph and the Korea's family. Yes, they both. should have. Yeah, and raise their children to unite. Yes. So is there anybody who wants to share some more about our reading today? Are you still all there? Yes. So it's a very significant day. This is the 38 years of Father's Washington Monument Rally celebration as of yesterday yes. and our reading also coincides with one of his readings his speech September 18, 1974 <laughs> yeah and then 1976 you know yes. so there's no coincidence here we are one with our true father and the book is one with, with us yes. that you know he predicted that there will be a a black man will be the president of the United States of America yeah. with a, a, a white mother and an African American, uh, yeah, yeah, of black descent that will father the, the president. Yeah. And now we have Barack Obama, the president of the United States. Yeah. And I heard the speech last night, that's why maybe I'm a little bit late. I heard it and then I slept and it's very inspiring you know in front of what they claim 300,000 but 1 million people were there and uh, I have an office mate I I told him oh we're celebrating today uh, the the Washington Monument rally and she she said yeah, I was supposed to be in that rally. She missed the bus. So until now she's not married. She said, I, I'm really curious what happened to Reverend Moon. I said, don't you know that, you know, he already went to the spiritual world? Yeah, I know that. But of course, I, I said that if she didn't miss the bus, maybe you will have children. You know, he, she already worked with the, my company for 25 years. Wow. Yeah, so the effect of that rally is really, you know, very, very <laughs> uh, everlasting. You know, these people are still trying to, to even find the Messiah, you know, and uh, want to know what Father is doing now. I said, yes, please come to our you know, our church, because they were invited when he, when she was like, maybe very young, you know. Yes, anybody else wants to share about our reading? I think Reverend Esther? Yeah, uh, yeah, we can also reflect on the next subtopic, which is... Uh, misunderstood by his family? Misunderstood by the family, but also the preparation for world, worldwide preparation. 
Yeah, for Christ's Christ advent. advent. Yes. Uh, where we read through Father's speech, mm-hmm. saying how God had prepared all yeah, yeah. these other religions. Buddhism. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, how wonderful God is. You, mm-hmm. you, you, you see, this is a before Christ. Um, God already prepared. Uh, uh, we read this again. Uh, in preparation for the first coming of Christ, God sent the prophet Malachi to the chosen people 430 years beforehand to arouse in them the strong messianic expectation at the same time among the worldwide people God founded religions suited to their region and cultures by which they could make the necessary internal preparation to receive the Messiah. In India, God established Buddhism through Gautama Buddha. And you can see the same time, uh, 1565 BC to 485 BC. And uh, as a new development out of Hinduism, in Greece, God inspired so- uh, Socrates. So, um, and this is also the years of 470 BC to 399. And then, and open a brilliant age of classical Greek civilization, which even today we know um, is uh, what mostly influences the Western world. And in the far east, further into the east, God raised up Confucius. And this is 552 BC to 479 BC. Who else can do such things in different places? So God exists and God directs history. And historians whether in Harvard or wherever, they cannot know this. Mm -hmm. The only person who has come to explain the unity of all these things and why they were coming and these religions were arising at the same period is for the worldwide preparation to receive the, the Messiah. Worldwide preparation for Christ's first advent. So we can see how God prepares the world uh, because he really knows that the world needs a Messiah, a model of a true person, a person who can relate with God directly in the context of um, family like we read uh, a few days ago, how confident Jesus was to proclaim he is the Son of God. Here people are looking at him when we read uh, here, Mm -hmm. misunderstood by his family. Mm -hmm. The family members from Mary himself, Mm -hmm. the mother, to Joseph, to Zachariah, Mm -hmm. to John the Baptist. These are his direct cousins, auntie, uncle, mm. and all of them. They, they, were they, they, they don't care about Jesus. That's what it, it, yes. it looks here. All these are showing great evidence. None of them cared about Jesus. Yes. While this is literally happening in the physical world, mm. Jesus is proclaiming, I'm the son of God. Yeah, it's my father's temple. <laughs> you people, you are going to look for me. You already left me. Don't you know this is, this is where you'll find me? Yeah. This is my father's house. Yeah. Amazing. That kind of confidence. And he was obedient to them. He should not have done with them back to 
Yeah. 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 So uh, I just uh, got inspired to, you know, to see the God. Uh, there is nothing which is coincidence, mm. uh, and that's why people uh, may easily just read history mm -hmm. and be good scholars mm -hmm. of history, but why that history happens the way it happens they have they cannot connect it why it happens like that except the messiah only the messiah can explain it because he is from god he is of god he is by god uh, and uh, from then on he is to bring the unity of all these preparations and foundations yeah. so that they can all become one foundation and one family under God. So we can see how true father also has worked from Korea and uh, in the years that father worked in Korea we know he's a, a tough uh, uh, course and uh, North Korea God was with him yeah. and he came freed him to come he's freed by the Western world yeah. uh, and he comes to South Korea the free nation mm -hmm. and from there he could raise the, the, the small church in the cut with cartons cardboards and mud house small place and call it the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World. What kind of a person thinking level is that? Yeah. From a cotton house, yeah. you are thinking of a association of world Christianity. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And by the end of 93 years, True Father has brought all these religions of Christians together whether anyone knows or connects it or not mm -hmm. true father has made that foundation to become one yes. and that's why right now we are reading the world scriptures and his own teachings so that we can see the revelation and the connection of all these religions how the, uh, the true father has made uh, a new foundation of harmonizing all these religions and uh, on this day when we remember the victory of the Washington Monument may the glory of God uh, be with True Father in, in heaven yes. and we thank heaven we thank True Father thank you so much you want to you yes anybody else Yes, Diane. Yes. Good Daya. morning, this is Diane. I thank you for your wonderful words. Also, uh, yes, yesterday was September 18th. That's right. The original Foundation Day. Yeah, original Foundation Day. Mm -hmm. every year mm -hmm. for many years. Yes. Foundation Day, September 18th. Mm -hmm. Also, yesterday, there was a, an anniversary celebration for more 40 year members. Oh, and that okay. was very wonderful. It was a, uh, a Japanese restaurant, and there were some wonderful uh, memories and words that were shared, mm -hmm. and uh, trip tributes. And that was a wonderful celebration with many excellent people. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you, Diane, for thank sharing. You. Yes. Yeah, I read also 1974 in Madison Square and here. Monument, Washington Monument, September 18 was and the, the, yeah, the original uh, foundation day. So even Father at the time was already thinking about this day, foundation day, when everyone will be restored. Mm. You know, a lot of people will be restored. Mm. But we have Chungil Guk right now. It's yes. foundation day. Mm. So we thank our Heavenly Father mm. and our True Father for all of these things.
and tomorrow we'll be reading about the uh, topic, subtopic number seven, the three temptations in the wilderness. Yes. So it's on page 498. And uh, if there are there any more uh, inspirations or declarations or uh, reflections. So even for true fathers uh, coming, there were already also a lot of preparation. The Sikh religion, they also are, you know, with the turbans, yeah. they were also was prepared by their founder, by God, to receive the Messiah. They were waiting for the Messiah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and even in Japan, I, I read a book that it is inscribed that, that in the future there will be a Messiah mm -hmm. in stone. Although it's in Japanese, he said he will marry a lot of people. There are even drawings like what we do in the blessing. Mm -hmm. And this was also 500 years before uh, uh, Father, you know, uh, uh, until this time. So how could they do this? Uh, how could they predict 500 years before? And of course, uh, what happened to uh, Malachi or Malachi, the prophet, is also parallel to what happened to Martin Luther. Right. When there was a, you know, a uh, Protestant uh, revolution yes. uh, before the coming of the Messiah. In 1517, that's also like 400 years, just like four, you know, 430 years, just like Malachi in in the Bible. Yeah. So all these things were planned and is parallel, so that we can receive the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So we are the church that knows when and where the Messiah will come. So if you receive our playback, please go to our nearest centers or here in Washington, D.C. In the Washington Family Church, you will learn more about the coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ. And we, we will be glad to uh, discuss with you about our, you know, our true father's teaching. Yes. So let's all rise and have unison prayer. Our most beloved heavenly parents, we're so grateful for this day, for having that monument, uh, Washington Monument Rally, 38 years ago in this city, in front of many uh, people claim 300,000, but it's more than that. In that time we pray that because of the rally we have this church. We pray that even the prediction of the black president we are is already fulfilled. We pray that many and many people will be knowing about our two parents. We pray also that we can really do our best to bring peace and harmony into this world by also sharing Father's teaching and the Bible and all other religions, the word scripture that we are reading here. We pray that we can rejoice with even the 140 couples that also celebrated yesterday and the foundation, original Foundation Day that was uh, declared on September 18, 1974 and 1976. We pray that now we can join our brothers and sisters to bring a world of peace. And tomorrow we pray for the second anniversary of his ascension, our true father. And we pray that in this memorial celebration, everyone should rejoice and really declare that we have already received the second coming of Christ. And we pray 
all of this in all our needs and in my name. At the national friends of Sacred Land, blessed them with family. Arju, Arju, Arju. Uri, yes, O Warden, Victorious day. We'll see you tomorrow also in the Happy memorial celebration. Happy Friday, Reverend Essa said. Yeah. Have a great and wonderful day. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome, Diane. Is Reverend Oliver still there? I, I think so, yes. <laughs>